uh, your computer as you scroll. We come back down, why don't you come back down and click on Alpha uh, so that we can come back up. And uh, so we're Alpha starting Tuesday. If you have a friend that wants to sign up, you can just click on Alpha, go to the Alpha page, and then click where it says just click, and that will take you straight to the Alpha sign up form. Uh, and so signing up is very simple online, easy to find. So that look at the website on your phone or uh, on your computer, it really is uh, well done and great. So thank you to Kathleen for all that she did. Uh, and we encourage you to take a look at it. Now, the, the real unique thing about our uh, website this time is when I first got here, our website had literally, we had vacation Bible school from 2021 still up. Uh, it just, we didn't know how to update it, uh, and so it just got old. Kathleen will be updating it regularly, which means that church events and things like that will be will be current. So you can actually send your friend there, friends there without uh, you know any fear. <laughs> so uh, Alpha, as I said, begins Tuesday. The Alpha course. This is a huge step for our congregation. This course is focused on asking the big questions that people ask about God, and we'll come together for a meal. Our meal planners are a bit overwhelmed because we found that we, we've had, we have currently have 55 people signed up for Alpha. Uh, so you can still sign up. Uh, there's sign up lists in the back uh, on the window as you leave the double doors and then over here by the coffee station and you can sign up online. Uh, so Alpha, we'll just watch this video to tell you a little bit more about what that is, but we'll begin with a meal and then uh, watch a video, a great video on one of the big questions of life. And then we will discuss it in a small group in a very non-threatening way. Great place to invite your friends. And I want to tell you this, we'll be doing Alpha regularly. So if, you, if you're not ready to invite a friend this time, you've not had that conversation yet, it'll happen next, uh, next winter or spring as well. So let's run that video and take a look. about life, faith, and Jesus is hard. And this is interesting, because at some point, everyone wrestles with life's big questions. Questions about hope, purpose, meaning, and love. Imagine creating a space where people in our community, our friends, neighbors, and co-workers, can come and have conversations in a way that is authentic and unforced where leaders don't need to have all the answers and anyone can ask tough questions and share honestly about what they believe. That's what Alpha is all about. Alpha started in a church in London years ago with a simple idea to engage friends who might not typically go to church. Lives were transformed and it began to grow all over the world. Today, you can find Alpha in schools, coffee shops, church buildings, prisons, and homes. And so far, millions of people have experienced Alpha. So what is Alpha? Alpha is a series of interactive sessions exploring the basics of the Christian faith. In each session, you eat food, listen to a talk, and have discussions in small groups. Eating food together creates space for people to connect, relax, and build friendships. The talks tackle core questions about life and faith from a Christian perspective. And the discussion allows people to unpack these ideas without fear of being corrupted or judged. All of this is done in a fun environment where anyone is welcome. There are three main sets of talks you could use. The Alpha Film Series, Alpha with Nikki Gumbel, and the Alpha Youth Series. Each is designed with a different audience in mind and is typically run over 8 to 12 weeks, with a weekend away where there are opportunities to experience worship through music and moments for prayer. Alpha also comes with everything you need to empower others to be involved, like discussion guides and training videos for you and your team. And all the talks and tools are available online and can be downloaded for free. By running Alpha, you're creating a space where people can connect with each other and connect with God. Sign up, get started, run Alpha today. And we've done that. We've signed up, we've gotten started, and we're running out of time. We're also running an alpha for youth. Do we, right, Gerald? Is that happening? Something like this. Okay, we don't know exactly when. <laughs> okay, so we'll be launching that as well. Uh, there's an offering box to help defray some of the expenses of alpha, especially the meals, and there's going to be a weekend away. We'll tell you 
to tell you more about that. Uh, that's on the right as you leave, and the general offering for our tithes is on the left as you leave uh, the uh, sanctuary today. And just so you be aware, set up for Alpha will begin immediately following the service. So if you're having coffee and suddenly the people in here are taking down chairs and moving them around, that's why uh, we're planning on getting that all ready. We're going to come before the Lord and worship this morning. Listen to these words from Psalm 103, a psalm of David. Praise the Lord, O my soul, and all my inmost being. Praise his holy name. Praise the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits, who forgives all your sins, who heals all your diseases, who delivers your life from the pit, who crowns you with steadfast love and compassion, who satisfies your soul with good things, so that your youth is renewed like the eagles. The Lord is compassionate and gracious, slow to anger, abounding in love. As high as the heavens are above the earth, so great is his love, his steadfast love towards those who fear him. As far as the east is from the west, so far has he removed our transgressions from us. Praise the Lord, all his works everywhere in his dominion. Praise the Lord, oh my soul. Let's come forward with prayer as we begin. Lord, we want to praise you. Hallelujah. You're so good. Your love is everlasting. Open our eyes to see the greatness of the love and the blessing that you have poured out upon us. Lord, we thank you for Sunday mornings, a time where week by week we can gather to celebrate your resurrection and the life that you have given us. And Father, we want to ask that you will so bless us in worship today, that you'll empower us and equip us for this week, that we might live for you. Father, we pray your blessing and healing upon Ben as he's in that hospital room in Kutowski. Lord, protect him and bring him full and complete healing. Lord, lift up his family as they walk alongside him. Father, we, we pray uh, also uh, for, for Shirley Bergstrom, who's transitioning to live with her daughter Becky. Bless that transition. Father, we, we pray that you will be with Jim Curry, who has surgery, major surgery on Tuesday out of the University of Michigan. Uh, Lord, protect him, bless him, provide for him, and Maxine. Father, we pray for, uh, for Ronnie Hunt and for her family, that you give them comfort and peace in the loss of John. We thank you, Lord, that John is celebrating with you in glory. And Father, as we lost that Alpha course, we ask that this will be the beginning of a uh, new focus of reaching out as a covenant church, and that we'll see people come to faith in Jesus and come to know the life and the peace and forgiveness and the everlasting hope that we ourselves have come to know. Lord, give us opportunities to share our faith. When those opportunities arise, give us boldness. Lord, let our light shine. And the Father, may we, as your children, as your people, in this foreign land here on earth, living for the glory of heaven, may we stand up for Jesus. Boldly in our lifestyle and in our words, proclaiming him and just we're being, being proud of our everlasting God and what he has done for us. May we glorify your name. We ask all this in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Let's all stand. Let's worship our Lord. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. 
It begins, first of all, by authentically loving people and getting to know people. And then they, they showing them the love of Jesus in the way that we live. And then as time goes on, it will include talking about the Lord Jesus. So it begins with just our lifestyle, living the life. As it continues, there'll be times when we'll talk about our faith. You see, people need to hear the gospel to come to Jesus. The Apostle Paul says in Romans 10, 14, but how can they call on him to save them unless they believe in him? How can they believe in him if they've never heard about him? And how can they hear about him unless someone tells them? And that someone is you and me. It's us. We have that good news. And so today, we're going to talk about how we can share our faith both in some key things that we do and how we live, and also in our words. We're going to share a couple of uh, practical, simple ways that you can share the gospel as well. My goal is to equip us all to be able to tell people about Jesus. And so let's turn in our Bibles to 1 Peter chapter 3, begin reading from verse 8 through verse 17. Peter writes, Finally, all of you, be like-minded, be sympathetic, love with one another, be compassionate and humble. You turn this thing on. I'm going to try to do it for my own clicker today. But I need to know what I'm doing first. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We'll see. Do not repay evil with evil or insult with insult. On the contrary, repay evil with blessing, because to this you were called, so that you may inherit a blessing. For whoever would love life and seek good days must keep their tongue from evil and their lips from deceitful speech. They must turn from evil and do good. They must seek peace and pursue it. The eyes of the Lord are on the righteous, and his ears are attentive to their prayers. But the face of the Lord is against those who do evil. Who is going to harm you if you are eager to do good? But even if you should suffer for doing what is right, you are blessed. Do not fear their threats, do not be frightened. But in your hearts, revere Christ as Lord. Always be prepared to give an answer to everyone who asks you to give the reason for the hope that you have. But do this with gentleness and respect. Give you a clear conscience so that those who speak maliciously against your good behavior in Christ may be ashamed of their slander. For it is better, it is God's will, to suffer for doing good than for doing evil. This is the word of the Lord. Now, as Peter talks about both the words that we need to speak and the way that we need to live, his first point is that. We need to overcome evil with good. Now, Peter, if you remember back to our last few sermons, has been talking about living in right relationships with one another. First of all, we talked about living in right relationship with those in civil, uh, civic, and in uh, our workplace authority over us. Then he talked about right relationship between the husband and the wife. Now, in our first verse in our text today, Peter addresses all believers about how we're all to live towards one another as brothers and sisters. Per se, finally, all of you be like-minded, be sympathetic, love one another, be compassionate and humble. We are to be like-minded. The Holy Spirit gives us a unity of mind as we seek Him. We all have a common purpose, and we're all brothers and sisters in the Lord Jesus Christ. And we're to love one another, which includes sympathy and compassion, rejoicing with those who rejoice, weeping with those who weep, understanding what people are going through and supporting and encouraging one another through all those things. If we do these things, there will be unity in the Bible, there will be oneness and closeness. We're living in a world that is hostile towards believers in Christ and is becoming increasingly hostile. And we've got to stick together. We can't be shooting 
at one another <laughs> and they're getting wounded by the friendly fire. We need to walk together in unity as family. And Peter begins to discuss how we're to relate to all people when they mistreat us. Verse 9, do not repay evil with evil or insult with insult. On the contrary, repay evil with blessing. Because to this you were called, so that you may inherit a blessing. Now, Peter is probably mainly thinking about the non-believers in the world around who are ridiculing, mocking the believers. But unfortunately, we all know that our fellow believers can be hostile at times as well. Unfortunately, it ought not to be, but so it is. We're humans. And so how do we respond to non-believers or believers when they're hostile, when they're unkind? Mean. They insult us. Well, we bless them. Right? That's right. God has blessed us. He blessed us when we were still his enemies. When we were hostile towards him. He's forgiven us. He's given us everlasting hope. Everlasting life. His peace and presence today. And as we have been blessed, we are called to bless. It's our job to bless others. We've been blessed to be a blessing. See, this is, this is so radically different than the way the world lives and so radically different than the way we would live by nature apart from the work of the Holy Spirit in our lives. We overcome evil with good. Paul says the same thing in Romans 12, verse 14. Bless those who persecute you. Bless and do not curse. In verse 17, do not repay anyone evil for evil. Verse 21, do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. Our Lord Jesus commanded us in Luke 6, 27 and 28. Love your enemies. Do good to those who hate you. Bless those who curse you. Pray for those who mistreat you. Wow. What words, powerful words for those convicting. You see, when we fight evil with evil, when we give way to bitterness, unforgiveness, to rage, to unkindness, the evil that is in the world can enter our own souls and desecrate us. We're a holy people. We love the way the Lord has loved us. The way we defeat evil isn't to fight hatred with hatred. The way to overcome evil is to come in the opposite spirit. The way you overcome hatred is by loving. The way you overcome someone's arrogance is by humility. The way you overcome cursing is by blessing. This makes no sense to the world. Right? We fight the world, we fight fire with fire. You give them what they're giving to you. But we fight evil with good. As we do so. Our hearts will soar above the evil. And we'll begin to overcome the evil around us. And we'll also prevent that evil from taking root in our own hearts. You see, if we're going to bring the good news of the gospel to this world, our lives need to be the good news. We need to show forth the gospel by how we live. Jesus loved, forgave, showed mercy when we were his enemies. We do the same. We must be the good news to the world in both word and deed. So this is our second point. Let your light shine. We're born again. 
doesn't always show, but the very presence of Christ dwells within us. And as we let that light shine, it authenticates the gospel message when we share it. So Peter's talking in our passage today about the need to both live a godly life and the importance of being prepared to share our faith verbally with others. He tells us in verse 15, in your heart, set apart Christ as Lord. See, leading others to Jesus begins by us ourselves submitting to the Lordship of Jesus Christ when the world does not do that. And then Peter says, always be prepared to give an answer to everyone who asks you to give the reason for the hope that you have. But do this with gentleness and respect. Keeping a clear conscience. Do it with gentleness and respect. Keeping a clear conscience. How can we share the gospel? It is as important as the words that we share. Our behavior, our lifestyle, is as important. Both are needed. So Jesus tells us, Matthew 5, 16, Let your light shine before men, that they may see your good deeds, and praise your Father in heaven. And so we need to be the good news in word and deed. And being the good news begins by loving people and being real, being Authentic. It's true, you've heard it said, people won't care about how much you know until they know how much you care. If we talk about God's love, we'll be far more convincing if we're speaking with love and living with love. Being a witness in lifestyle is essential. But more is needed. Peter tells us, be prepared to share the reason for the hope that you have. Latter part, verse 15, always be prepared to give an answer to everyone who asks you to give the reason for the hope that you have. What's the hope? The hope is the good news that Jesus has paid the price for our sins, so that our sins are forgiven, that we've been washed clean, we're free from guilt and shame because that we're free from sin and death, and we've been given, been given everlasting life. We can know God's love and His presence right now. What a friend we have in Jesus. He's there to walk with us to bear our needs, and we have victory in Jesus. That's the good news, and the, the, the hope that he is with us today, he'll be with us tomorrow, he'll be with us forever. Now, in a moment, we're going to talk about how you can share that hope with others. But I want to first talk about a way that we can bring the good news to others. Is we can bring the good news by con as we connect others to Jesus' people. Who are Jesus' people? We are, right? The church. And so oftentimes, a huge step in bringing people to the love and life of Jesus is bringing them to Jesus' people, where they can hear the good news, where they can meet uh, Christians and find out that, that we're normal people. Well, <laughs> sort of. <laughs> we're, <laughs> We're normal in some ways. <laughs> they kick the tires and find out, yeah, this place, it's safe. It reminds me of the story of the Samaritan woman at the well. Jesus was at a well, his disciples had gone into a town to buy food, and a Samaritan woman came to get water for the well, and uh, he strikes up a conversation with her. And he tells her, you know, you're coming here to drink water. You drink that water, you'll get thirsty again. He says, if you drink the water that I give you, you'll never thirst. You say, oh, Lord, give me that water. So I'll never have to thirst again or come to the well, well, the water here at this well. And then he, he told her things about herself that he could not possibly have known. He just met her. She was astounded and realized, this man's the prophet. Maybe he's the Christ, the Messiah. And then the Bible tells us what happened next, John 4, verse 28. 
then leaving her water jar, she was so well that she forgot what she came for. The woman went back to the town and said to the people, Come see a man who told me everything I ever did. Could this be the Messiah? They came out of the town and made their way towards Jesus. Many of the Samaritans from that town believed in him because of the woman's testimony. He told me everything I ever did. So when the Samaritans came to him, they urged him to stay with them, and he stayed two days longer. And because of his words, many more became believers. They said to the woman, we no longer believe just because of what you said. Now we have heard for ourselves. And we know that this man really is the Savior of the world. Now we have heard for ourselves. What did she do? Did she give a complex gospel presentation? No. She just gave her testimony. She just told people what Jesus had done for her. And she invited them to come to Jesus. Come to a place where they could meet Jesus. And so, likewise, we can, we can invite people to church where people will experience the Lord and hear the gospel. We can invite them to Alpha where people can hear the gospel and experience the Lord's presence at work. We can invite them to other events that our church is holding as they get connected. They'll have the opportunity to learn and experience the Lord. People usually belong before they believe. They get connected to other people, other believers, before they get connected to the world. Think about your life. It's probably true for you. You might have belonged to a Christian family. You might have been invited to a small group. You might have gotten to know a friend who hung out with you, and you begin to feel a closeness to them. People usually belong before they believe. And then the next thing is this. Prepare to share your personal testimony in a simple way. Notice something else about the story about the Samaritan woman. The woman did share profound theological truths about Jesus with the people she was talking to. She had just met Jesus. <laughs> she was a Samaritan, and the Samaritans were heretics. She just said, I met, I met Jesus. Come see she just shared testimony. And that's all it took to get people to flock out to meet Jesus. Your personal testimony is one of the most powerful tools of evangelism, reaching people with Jesus, that, that, that you can imagine. You know, they, they say that, that people can, can, argue, can, can, can uh, you know, disagree with an argument. But it's hard to disagree with the testimony. This is what Jesus has done. Okay. Everyone has a testimony. You may have had a rough background, a, a tough upbringing, and the Lord Jesus rescued you, and there may have been a, a dramatic turnaround in your life. Or like me, you may have grown up in a Christian family. My dad was a pastor who loved the Lord. But there came a time in my life when the gospel became real, the Holy Spirit touched me, and I saw things I had never seen before, and that changed my mind. And here are three simple steps that can help you share your personal testimony with others. Very simple. The first thing to do is share what your life was like before Christ. Or if you've been a Christian all your life, Share what your life was like before some impactful moment that took place. Maybe that can, maybe something God showed you in the Word. It might be something that happened through a hard time in your life and experience. So share what your life was before that. Next, share what happened in your life that brought you to Christ. Share that in Christ. Or, in my case, share. What happened to open your eyes to a truth that you never seen? And finally, share what your life was like afterwards. Uh, what is it like now? Sometimes helpful to summarize the before and after using two words to describe, first of all, what your life was before, and then what your life was after you met Jesus or came to some life 
changing truth. So before we might be joyless, after we might be joyful. In my case, the before word was uh, could be uh, anxious, and the after word peace. My uh, whole life growing up, I was just driven to try to prove my worth. It was partly probably because my parents. While loving people never really affirmed me, so I, I never felt their affirmation, so I tried harder and harder. But part is just the way I was wired as well. So all my life I was striving. And that, that striving to please my parents became striving to please others, became striving to earn God's love by the way I live. And I was driven. I, there's no peace. And I didn't even know it because it's all I ever did. And then there came a time, I, I, I think I've told this story before, and I'll tell it again. When I went through a time where I just felt like I was failing the Lord, and I was in my face before the Lord in prayer, and I said, Lord, I've tried to bring home A's all my life, and I've just brought home an F. And the Lord just gently said to me with a hint of humor in his voice, Oh, Paul, you bring bringing home F's all your life. <laughs> and I still love you. It's like the light bulb went on. And I realized so all my so what I thought was pretty good wasn't very good at all. The Lord still loved me. And for the first time, I was a pastor when this happened. For the first time, I got grace. I understood. I don't have to earn his love. He already loves me with all my best. I finally stopped trying to earn his love and receive the love that was already there. And I begin to know is peace before, after, and after. And so ask this question, what is your two-word story? You can use the same word uh, and, uh, and, and add a question mark uh, for the before time and uh, just a period of explanation mark for the after time. Like, accept it. No, I didn't feel accepted. Now, accepted. Free? No, I was in bondage. Now, free, free. And there's many others, and you, you pick your own word fulfill, hope, <coughs> joy, love. In my case, it was peace or purpose. You don't have to use the same word. It could be, I was dead. I don't know why. I was broken and now I'm, I'm transformed. I'm whole. I, I was restless and now I'm, I'm content. I was fear, whole, now I'm fearless and so forth. Christians, what are the words? And maybe more than one story in your life. There are for most of us. Uh, there's a, I have a story of, of doubt and faith. And so let the Lord speak to your heart. And you can go to the website uh, eachtoday.com, and you can find two word story examples and testimonies. And I put that website uh, address in your bullet. And let me tell you this it's okay that your life is still in process. I have a whole lot more peace now than I did before, but I still struggle at times with anxiety and with a lack of peace. So the question I ask myself is this, am I better with Jesus than I would have been without Jesus? And the question is a resounding yes. And so we're all still in process. So you know, you say, I, I was restless and now I'm content, and it's like mostly content. And we can be honest about that when we're talking to the, our, our, our friends. Peter tells us to be prepared to give an answer regarding your hope in Christ. Prepare yourself by thinking through your simple testimony. And if you can't think of an experience of God's transforming work in your life, you, you may need to spend some time reflecting on, on what God has done. Because He has done it. So it may take some time to ponder. But for some of you, it'll come up right away. For some of us, we need to gain a deeper understanding of who we are in Christ Jesus and begin to live into that so that we will 
experience who we are and have it, uh, understand the testimony we have to share. For some of us, we need a touch of the power of the Holy Spirit in our life to bring alive, to bring to life more fully that which we already have in Christ Jesus. As we do so, we will have a testimony to share. You all have a testimony. So be thinking about it. God's good work in your life. And then Peter, in telling us to share the reason for a little that was in us, he tells us to be, to be prepared, and we need to be prepared to share the gospel message in some way. You see, the two are so important. You need to be ready to share how Jesus has changed your life. But it's also important to be able to share the gospel in a simple way. How Jesus has saved us from our sins and given us everlasting life. So I, I want to share a simple tool that anyone can use to uh, to share the gospel, and this uses one verse. You know, some people think, "Oh, I have to memorize dozens of verses to share my faith." You just need to know one verse, and, and you don't even need to memorize. I encourage you to memorize it, but just take your bulletin insert and put it in your wallet or put it in your purse and have it with you because the, the verses in the bulletin there. In your both notes uh, for the sermon, uh, as well as this little presentation that I'm going to share with you. And uh, everything I'm going to share with you is called One Verse Evangelism. It can be found on the Navigators website, navigators.org. Uh, this was One Verse Evangelism by Dr. Randy Ray, uh, Raysbrook. And uh, the website is navigators.org. And then you know, uh, forward slash resource, forward slash one. That's first, that's evangelism. But if you just, if you just Google one verse evangelism, it'll come up and uh, look for the Navigator's website. The gospel can be powerful when it's shared in simplicity. And this is so easy to use because it just uses one verse. And also the uh, uh, illustration and any questions that you ask. So imagine this. You're with a friend, maybe you're at a coffee shop or you're having, uh, having lunch. And uh, you, the opportunity comes to talk about Jesus. So you just grab an napkin. This is a napkin. If you look carefully, it's like the bridges in the bottom. Uh, and, uh, and grab a pen. And then uh, write Romans 6.23 at the top of the napkin. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. Romans 6.23. Write that down. And then we're just going to walk through this word by word. And ask your friend if, if he or she would like to see a simple picture based on this verse that explains God, what God can do in our lives. And if they say yes, then underline the word wages and ask this question. How would you feel if your boss refused to pay you the wages that were due to you? And people... Deep down, they know that it's only right to get what they deserve. And uh, in the same way, we earn wages from God by how we live our life. Now we're going to find out that those wages are positive. The next thing you underline is the word sin. Ask your friend what he or she thinks when they hear this word. Uh, it's always interesting. This is a dialogue. It takes time. And you might explain that sin is, is an attitude in addition to behavior. It could either be actively fighting against God or it could just be merely excluding them from our lives. The word sin literally means to miss the mark. So just picture an archer trying to shoot at a target and you're missing the bullseye. And you can say, ask your friend, do you miss the mark sometimes? I know I do. Sin includes things that we do as well as things we don't do. So just have that conversation. It may take a while, but that's, that's good. That's one of the things that sin does. It, it separates us from God. And so you can ask, have you ever felt distant from God? And God seems far away. Then underline the word death and write it down on the left-hand side of the day. And explain the Bible tells us that the wages of sin is death. So we, our works have been bad, and so the penalty for just wages is death for our sin. It's everlasting death. The just destiny for all people is the punishment of death. Then 
draw lines representing the chasm. And he put a stick man on one side and God on the other side. And he explained how sin has created this huge gap between this huge gulf between us and God. <coughs> and, and then draw the arrows from the man's side toward across, the, trying to get across that gulf. But they just barely start. They don't actually start at all. It's our effort using religion or good works to get to God. But religion and good works can never cross the chasm that's been created by sin. And so you sin, the wages of sin is death, the chasm is huge. That's bad news. Then underlying the word but, which tells us that there's a transition in what's being said, a contrast in thought. We share the bad news now, we're going to share the good news. Underline the word gift and ask, what's the difference between a gift and a wage? Let them answer. Certainly, a, a gift is something that, that we've not earned. Some people like me spend their whole life trying to earn God's favor, or early part of my life trying to earn God's favor by doing good. But it's impossible to earn our good to be good. And it's impossible to earn what's already been bought. If someone gives you a gift, you don't have to pay for it. It's a gift. And so then I don't the word God and write it on top uh, underneath gift, the gift of God. And explain that the gift we're talking about it's free, it comes from God Himself, no one else can give it. Why would God want to give us such a gift as eternal life? Well, we don't deserve it. It's because He loves us. When He created the world, He created the world. The purpose of it was to populate it with people who knew Him and loved Him. That's His joy and delight. But we've chosen to live lives separate. From God. I say it 53 6. We all have sheep have gone astray. Each one of us has turned to his own way. But because of God's great love for us, he's provided a way for us to live in peace with him. By the way, while you're sharing this, you can bring in other scriptures if they come to your mind. That's the great thing about this, is that it's the whole gospel presentation. You bring in things, or if you don't think of something, that's fine too. And then you underline eternal life. This is the gift. The gift of God is eternal life. And ask, how would you define these words, eternal life? Let them talk about that. Life. What's life? Real life. What's eternal? And then you contrast one side of the cliff, which is death, with the other side, which is eternal life. And ask, what is the opposite of separation from God? Well, it's, it's eternal life. It's a relationship with God forever. So you just, just dialogue with your friend and, and ask questions. And by the way, I mentioned, you know, this whole dialogue of all this is, is on that. If you Google uh, one verse evangelism navigators, I mean, they have whole scripts for this just to read it through and get, get familiar with it. But it'll come to you as you're sharing. And then underline Christ Jesus. And write them so they, they cross the gap between man and God. And help your friend to consider that just as every gift has a unique giver, only Jesus Christ can give eternal life. Eternal life in Christ Jesus, our Lord. There's no other way. He's the way, the truth, and the life. And then draw a cross to be a bridge across the, that gap. You can ask the question, do you know how we can receive the gift of God? It's simply by believing in Jesus Christ and trusting what he's done on the cross, that he's died for our sins to wash them away. God so loved the world that he gave his only son that whoever believes in him shall never perish or death, eternal life. The gift is offered, but we have to take it and receive it. And we receive it through faith. So just write the word trust or faith uh, on the top of the line going from the man Side to God's side. That's how we receive the gift. We trust in what Jesus has done for us on the cross. To wash our sins away. And to give us new life. Finally, you can underline the word Lord. Just explain that. Then when we put 
our faith in Jesus to wash our sins away. We're also acknowledging that He's the Lord, the leader of our life. We receive Him as Savior and Lord. We're saved by grace alone, but we're saved to begin to live a changed life, the life of love, the kind of life that God intended for us to live. There's the gospel. You may feel bad at that time saying, would you like to pray to ask the Lord to come to, to, to forgive your sins and to give you a new life? And you know, sometimes you just be shocked to still ask that question. And go, yes! <laughs> just a simple prayer. Lord, just ask for forgiveness of sins. I put my trust in Jesus. Thank you for forgiving my sins and giving me a new life. And that's, that's, you know, and they can pray the prayer, they can pray and pray after you. It, it's not about everything being done perfectly. It's God at work. That's it. It's not my words. It's the work of the Holy Spirit. We always need to remember it's the Holy Spirit that saves. When we share the good news, the word has power. I mean, you can blow up and the person will still come to Jesus because the Holy Spirit's at work. I went back to this morning, I was reading Matthew 4, uh, verse 26 and following, and, and Jesus shares this parable. This is what the kingdom of God is like. A man scatters seed on the ground. It's the word of God. Night and day when he sleeps or gets up, the seed sprouts and grows, though he does not know how. All by itself, the soil produces grain. First the stalk, then the head, then the full kernel in the head. As soon as the grain is ripe, he puts the sickle to it because the harvest has come. He sowed the seed and just waited. Because the seed had power. And that ground enabled it to grow. We just sow the seed in the water. But it, the, the harvest comes from the Lord. And so just share imperfectly, relax, and let God be the And so our response is simply this let your light shine. And be prepared to share the reason for the hope you have in Christ. Let your light shine and be prepared to share the reason for the hope you have in Christ. We, these are two ways, powerful ways, to share the hope that we have. And then, so ask these questions. Put these in the bulletin. How is God calling you to let your light shine? And who might God be placing in your heart to invite to your home, a meal, like to Alpha. And you know, if you not begin building your relationship, it might not be this Alpha, it might be the next Alpha in the spring. Like the church. And also ask, what is your two word story? Be thinking about that. Talk to a friend or a family member about one of those two words for me. And then you can prepare. How can you prepare to share the reason for the hope that you have in Christ? Ask that question. One thing I, I encourage you to do is uh, you know, lead your husband to Christ using this illustration. Lead, lead your wife to Christ using this illustration. I said it's kind of cheap. Lead, expect that you are married to a believer, but, but lead a friend to Christ who's a believer. You know, just sit down with a friend or, or a loved one or a family member and just say, hey, I want to practice this. Grab a nap and just walk it through. And, and you may stumble through it. That's fine. Just, just do it. Let them do it back. And, and just do it by crack and by action. So you'll be ready. These are big things. God can work through you. He can work through me. So who my God be placing in your heart to apply? In your home, to Alpha, or to church. I pray to push the buttons. Okay. <laughs> to your story. And how can we prepare yourself to share the reason for love? Thank you, man. Heavenly Father, uh, you have done such a great work in our lives. And Father, we want to be prepared. We want to be prepared to share the good news. And so, Lord, open our eyes to see the good things you've done in our lives. And there might be several, I'm sure there are several stories of how you touched us and opened our eyes to your truth, touched us with your love, and it brought change. Stories. Lord, let's be prepared. Lord, let's be prepared to share the gospel. And all, Lord, may our lives shine. And may we learn to bless, to bless as you have blessed us, and to overcome evil with good, that both in our deeds 
And in other words, we might be the good news to the world around us. And to you be the glory. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Amen. Stand and close worshiping the Lord and celebrating all of the promises that we've received in Christ Jesus. Amen. Amen. Go on your way, rejoice. Yeah.